Welcome everybody to our time of evening prayer today on Friday the 15th of October. Today the church celebrates the life and witness of St. Teresa of Avila, teacher of the faith. And we begin as always with our prayers of preparation. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. <clears throat> to you be praise and glory for ever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts, to set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. There are three psalms for today's evening prayer, psalm number 130, 131 and 137. We begin with psalm 130. Out of the depths of I cried to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you so that you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the night watch for the morning, more than the night watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Psalm 131 O Lord, my heart is not proud, my eyes are not raised in haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters, with things that are too high for me. But I have quieted and stilled my soul, like a weaned child on his mother's breast. So my soul is quieted within me. O Israel, trust in the Lord from this time forth for evermore. And Psalm 137. By the waters of Babylon we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. As for our liars, we hung them up on the willows that grow in the land. For there our captors asked for a song, our tormentors called for mirth. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth, if I do not remember you, if I set not Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember, O Lord, against the people of Edom the day of Jerusalem, how they said, Down with it, down with it, even to the ground. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction, happy the one who repays you for all you have done to us, who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first lesson is from 2 Kings, chapter 19, verses 20 to 36. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I have heard your prayers to me about King Sennacherib of Assyria. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. She despises you, she scorns you, virgin daughter Zion. She tosses her head behind your back, daughter Jerusalem. Whom have you mocked and reviled? Against whom have you raised your voice and haughtily lifted your eyes? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers you have mocked the Lord and you have said, With my many chariots I have gone up the heights of the mountains. To the far recesses of Lebanon, I felled its tallest cedars, its choicest cypresses. I entered its farthest retreat, its densest forest. I dug wells and drank foreign waters. I dried up with the sole of my foot all the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard that I determined it long ago? I planned from days of old what now I bring to pass that you should make fortified cities crash into heaps of ruins, while their inhabitants, shorn of strength, are dismayed and confused and confounded. They have become like plants of the field and like tender grass, 
like grass on the housetops, blighted before it's grown. But I know you're rising and you're sitting, you're going out and coming in, and you're raging against me. Because you have raged against me, and your arrogance has come to my ears, I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth, and I will turn you on the way and I will turn you back on the way by which you came. And this shall be the sign for you. This year you shall eat what grows of itself, and in the second year what springs from that. Then in the third year sow, reap, plant vineyards, and eat their fruit. The surviving remnant of the house of Judah shall again take root downwards and bear fruit upwards. For from Jerusalem a Rembrandt shall go out, and from Mount Zion a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city. Shoot an arrow there, come before it with a shield, or cast up a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, by the same he shall return. He shall not come into this city, says the Lord, for I will defend this city to save it, for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. That very night the angel of the Lord set out and struck down 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. When morning dawned, they were all dead bodies. Then King Sennacherib of Assyria left, went home and lived at Nineveh. Here ends our first lesson. And our canticle, a song of the justified. Our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe, who believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to, for death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exalt in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, and endurance brings hope, and our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exalt in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, for God's love has been poured into our hearts. Our second lesson is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 to chapter 4, verse 1. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh, even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews as to the law, a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for his sake. I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who then, who are mature, be of the same mind. 
And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears, their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, so that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Here ends our second lesson and our responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. And the Magnificat. Those who keep and teach the commandments will be considered great in heaven. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. The promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. For those who keep and teach the commandments will be considered great in heaven. And so let us pray for the church and for all the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, we pray to you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in the paths of peace and goodwill, we pray to you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for all our sins and offences, we pray to you, O Lord. That there may be peace in your church and for the whole world, we pray to you, O Lord that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit, in communion with St. Teresa, St. Giles, St. Asaph and St. David, and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ, we pray to you, O Lord. And so let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. On today, the 15th of October, we pray for the Diocese of Gloucester in the Church of England. In our own diocesan calendar of prayer, we pray for the Poole Mission Area and for Roy Turner, their Mission Area Leader. We pray for Archdeacon Barry, Archdeacon of Montgomery, and for our Bishop Gregory, for all his ministry for and among us. We continue to pray for those who develop, produce and roll out the vaccine. For Colin and all people in nursing and residential homes for Daniel and all those in prison, and for their families. We pray for Jane and the chaplaincy team at the Myla Hospital, and for Alan and the chaplaincy team at HMP Berwyn. We pray for those known to us at this time who are sick or in need of our prayers, especially those who have nobody to pray for them. We pray for Louise, Derek, Gordon, Harry, Dot, Peter, Joshua, Bob, Alison, Paul, Barbara, Les, Beryl, Maldwin, Roy, Mark, Vernon and Peggy. And we pray for those who we love but no longer see, who find their eternal rest with you, Lord, as we remember in our prayers Sylvia and Tessa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And our colleague for today. Merciful God, 
who by your spirit raised up your servant Teresa of Avila to reveal to the church the way of perfection. Grant that her teaching may awaken in us a longing for holiness until we attain to the perfect union of love in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray then with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.